this is uh, lecture four of uh, this particular course on uh, analog MOS circuit design. Uh, in the last three lectures, uh, we have talked about uh, the device characteristics of a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And we have already established that uh, this MOS can be regarded as a voltage controlled current source. And we will be utilizing this property of MOS device for the development of MOS amplifier. So as we have seen already in, in the last lecture that uh, we have two different regions operations for a MOS whenever it is on. The first region of operation is uh, considered to be the saturation whenever the MOS just turns on. And if the drain to source voltage is greater than zero volt, when the gate to source voltage just crosses the threshold voltage, then the device turns on in saturation. And as you go on increasing the gate to source voltage, a point will come uh, when the overdrive voltage becomes higher than the drain to source voltage. I mean, this gate to source minus threshold will become higher than the drain to source voltage, in which case we consider that the device enters into the triad region. And if you go on increasing gate to source voltage to a very high value, uh, then the device enters into the deep triad region. So the MOS uh, that we have uh, symbolized like this. So let me once again show you the symbol to start with. Basically a three-terminal device. So once again for the timing, let us now forget about the body uh, or the bulk of the MOS. So you have three terminals. This one is get, this one is drain, and this one is source. Now, if VGS minus VTH, if this is less than or equal to VDS, then the device operates in the triode region or linear region. I mean, sorry. If VGS minus VTH is less than or equal to VDS, then the device operates in the saturation region. And if VGS minus VTH, this value is greater than or equal to VDS, then the device operates in the triode or linear region. Now in the saturation region, what you can observe is uh, we can visualize this MOS as a voltage controlled current source. So if you can remember our uh, last day's derivation, the ID VDS characteristics, it looks something like that. This one is IT, this one is VDS. Now you have a variation like this. Now for the timing, let us forget about the channel length modulation. So once this uh, point VGS minus VTH is crossed, which is known as the overdrive voltage, then the device is in saturation. So this is the uh, saturation region. And if uh, the drain to source voltage is less than this, less than the overdrive voltage, and then the device is in triode region. And we have also established that uh, when the value of VDS, the drain to source voltage is much, much less as compared to the two times the overdrive voltage. I mean, if I just consider this part of the graph, then this uh, parabolic behavior can also be approximated as a linear one, a linear behavior. And in which case you can simply regard this MOS as a voltage control register. So we can have two different uh, applications of MOS resulting from two different regions operation. In this region, when the gate to source voltage, I mean this uh, gate to source minus the threshold voltage is large as respect to this drain to source voltage, then this particular region of operation is known as the linear region. In which case you can just uh, forget about the quadratic term of uh, VDS in the expression of the current and you can write uh, this ID 
as a linear function of vgs minus vdh so under which case you can consider that this particular current can be controlled by changing the gate to source voltage in a linear fashion however uh, if uh, the corresponding drain to source voltage exceeds this particular value vgs minus vt that is overdrive voltage uh, then uh, ideally uh, we can consider that we can have a constant current and we have also uh, found out what is that amount of current so that current was nothing but half mu n c ox w by l into vgs minus vth whole square that is overdrive voltage whole square vgs minus vth whole square so once again if we now uh, try to observe the this particular device not in symbolic form but in some other form which will be useful for us to analyze the circuit then what we have is uh, we have a gate terminal we have a gate terminal we have a source terminal and we have a drain terminal so these are the three terminals so one is the gate terminal one is the source terminal and the other one is a drain terminal so these are the three terminals as of now now as you understand so let me just write it down the name so here you have this to be my gate this to be the source and this to be the drain so as you know between gate to source so we have an insulator the silicon dioxide is there so since the insulator is there so we can expect that there should not be any electrical connection between this gate and source so this is basically electrically this is an open circuit what do we have between the drain source we know that if i want to operate the device in the saturation region where the amount of current that is uh, id drain current is becoming constant and it's a function of uh, this gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage or in other words it's a function of gate to source voltage and as far as we just forget about the channel length modulation if we just neglect the effect of channel length modulation then this current can be considered to be a constant one so between drain to source what we can do is we have between drain to source we have a constant current source so between these two we can have a current source and the direction of the current is from drain to source so that should be the direction of the current and that is nothing but the amount of the current is nothing but half mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square what about vgs this is nothing but this difference so if i consider the potential difference between the gate terminal and the source terminal that is nothing but the vgs so what we have this current if i consider this to be my output circuit then this output current is a function of the input voltage if i uh, if i uh, connect one uh, input signal over here some input signal i am getting input signal over here then so let let me just directly connect so, suppose i am having one signal source like this and let me connect this one directly suppose this is my input signal let me consider this one is my v in and suppose source is also grounded then what you can have is v in is nothing but your vgs now the output current as obtained from this diagram output current is a function of the gate to source voltage or in other words the output current is a function of the input voltage now if we allow this output current to pass through a resistance connected between drain to source like this then what we have suppose let me connect one resistance between these two terminal between drain to source and let me consider this resistance to be a resistance like rd because it is connected between drain to source so that's why it is known as rt or you can also call rl no problem and if i want to find out the voltage difference between these two terminal and if i call this voltage to be say v out 
then you can uh, easily find out that v out is nothing but so the current is flowing in this direction and as far as our notation is concerned this terminal is positive with respect to this terminal so obviously the value of the current the magnitude of the current will be the same however the direction will be the opposite because as far as this particular notation is concerned the current will flow from this terminal to this terminal right from source to drain so ultimately your v out will be nothing but minus half mu n c ox w by l so i can write like vgs minus vth whole square into part d and this vgs can be substituted by means of this v in then ultimately you can have a representation like v out as a function of v in so ultimately what we have is we have a voltage controlled current source in the form of a mos device whose output current is a function of the input voltage this output current of this mos device id is a function of the input voltage so this function is a nonlinear function as you can see over here there is a quadratic representation quadratic relation between the output current id and the input voltage vgs or v in and if this current is allowed to pass through a resistance rd the drain resistance then the output voltage which is developed over here so this output voltage can be regarded as a function of the input voltage and if you can select the properties uh, i mean the different uh, variables over here in such a manner that the ratio between the output voltage to the input voltage is greater than 1 then you can have the essence of an amplification so in order to use the mos device as an amplifier what you need to have is you need to operate the device in the saturation region so that you can have a constant current like this and if this constant current flows through this particular resistance then you can have the corresponding output voltage a time varying output voltage so notionally uh, we can use the mos device as an amplifier in the saturation region but in order to use the mos as an amplifier apart from using this resistance rd we need to do something else so first of all let us try to check the circuit that we have already shown over here and let us check whether this circuit uh i mean whether we can use this particular circuit for our application or not so what we have done is we have just uh, drawn this uh, mos like this so this one is the drain terminal this one is the source terminal so source was grounded and we can have this is the gate terminal and we have connected the input signal like this between these two so let me consider this to be my input signal that is v in and between drain to source we have a resistance like this that is rd and we are taking the output from this terminal with respect to the source terminal which is already grounded now let us check whether this particular combination or this particular connection gives me proper amplification or not now to answer this question what you need to do is that we have to draw the id vgs characteristics first so last uh, day we have already explained how does this id versus vgs uh, characteristics look like so for your understanding let me once again show you the id vgs characteristics so this is your id the drain current and this is the gate to source voltage as you know uh from 0 to vth up to one threshold so if this is my threshold voltage vth so up to one threshold there will be no current because the device is not turned on and whenever uh, the gate to source voltage exceeds the threshold voltage vth then the id will increase in a parabolic fashion because uh, we have already mentioned in the last class in lecture 3 that whenever the device turns on just by providing a gate to source voltage slightly higher than the threshold voltage 
then the region in which the device turns on is nothing but the saturation region and in saturation region you must be knowing the relationship between the id and bgs that is a quadratic relationship id is equal to half mu and c ox w over l into vgs minus vt whole square so it will increase parabolic in a parabolic manner like this so this is the id versus vgs characteristics curve now here suppose uh, the input signal that i'm considering over here for the sake of simplicity let us assume we have a small excursion of input signal and this is nothing but a sinusoidal signal a sinusoidal signal of a given frequency let it be a frequency of 1 kilohertz or so and let us assume uh, that this peak from here to here is nothing but say 5 millivolt so we have a 5 millivolt peak over here and suppose we would like to design an amplifier for which the gain should be like say let it be the gain of 100, gain of say 10 so if the input signal is having an excursion from plus 5 millivolt to 0 to minus 5 millivolt and if i would like to have a gain of say 10 then obviously the corresponding fluctuation will be from plus 50 millivolt to 0 to minus 50 millivolt so this is before the amplification and after amplification we should have the same sinusoidal signal of same frequency but higher amplitude now what goes wrong with this particular circuit now as you know here the v is directly connected to the gate terminal of this particular device so this particular voltage vgs so if i consider this voltage to be my vgs get to source voltage so this circuit says that v in is exactly equal to vgs and suppose the peak amplitude of v in is equal to 5 millivolt now to answer this question whether this particular circuit is capable enough to provide you an amplifier or not let us take some standard value for the threshold voltage let us consider the threshold voltage to be say 0 0.5 volt let me assume let us assume that threshold voltage vth is equal to 0 0.5 volt so 0 0.5 volt is a threshold voltage that means as long as the get to source voltage is less than 0 0.5 volt which is nothing but 500 millivolt then obviously there is no flow of current and here you have applied input signal whose peak amplitude is only 5 millivolt so as you apply this particular input signal over here whose peak amplitude is less than the threshold voltage the device is not turned on the corresponding channel is not created device is not turned on the device is dead so this particular circuit will not be providing any kind of amplification so we have to ensure that the minimum get to source voltage that we have to provide even if the signal is absent that should be at least one threshold voltage that is vth so we need to modify this particular circuit diagram to some extent so that it can provide a faithful amplification so as you know the minimum value of the gate to source voltage which you must ensure even if the input signal is present that is vth that is a threshold voltage so what we can do is we can simply modify the circuit like this so one thing is very clear this input side is not correct we have to modify the input side first and then later on we have to observe the situation in the output side so even if the signal is absent we need to provide a get to source voltage by means of battery and whose value is equal to for the timing let us consider this value is equal to vth and this is my input signal v in and suppose we have a resistance connected between the drain and the ground and we would like to take the output from this terminal v out so the question is whether this circuit is good enough to give you an amplification or not so once again let me draw the id which is characteristic curve 
This is also known as the transfer characteristics because along the x direction you have the input voltage and along the y direction you have the output current. So it is also known as the transfer characteristics because one variable is associated with the input side and the other variable is associated with the output side. So this will be the fluctuation. This will be the variation of ID with respect to VGS and this is the threshold voltage. So here I find that even if the input signal is absent, if I assume that uh, the input signal is exactly equal to zero, I mean at this point, then also the gate to source voltage is given by the VTH because here uh, for this modified circuit, second circuit, uh, this uh, VGS can be written as V in plus VTH. So V in plus VTH is equal to your VGS. So even if V in is equal to zero, then also VGS is equal to VTH. So as a matter of fact, what you can find is when the V in value is slightly greater than zero or whenever the V in value attempts its peak at five millivolt, then obviously the channel is already created and you will be having certain amount of current. Now the question is whether this current is sufficient enough. So to answer this question, what you need to do is that you have to assume the threshold voltage, let me consider the threshold voltage to be 0.5 volt and let us try to find out what about the current whenever the input signal attempts its peak. So the peak value for the input signal, as you can find over here, the peak value of the input signal is equal to 5 millivolt. So that is the peak value of the input signal. And under this condition, if you'd like to find out the corresponding drain current ID over here. So once again, you can use this same expression ID is equal to half mu and C ox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. So that is a governing equation because the device operates in the saturation region. So that should be my governing equation, which relates the, the gate to source voltage with the drain current. Now my question is that whether uh, this input circuit by connecting a threshold voltage, I mean connecting a battery whose value equal to the threshold voltage is good enough to provide the corresponding bias or not. So to answer this question, you have to uh, assume uh, some values for the parameters. Already we have assumed that the threshold voltage to be 0.5 volt. Uh, let us also consider uh, the other parameters as well. Let me assume, let me assume typical value for mu and C ox, like let it be say 100 microamps per volt square. That should be the unit for mu and C ox. Quite apparent from this uh, expression itself because W by L is a dimensionless quantity and ID is in the range of, I mean, it's an uh, ID is a current. So obviously it will be having a unit of ampere, either milliampere or microampere, and this is volt. So a microampere per volt square, uh, so that uh, the number that you are getting over here is a moderately high value. Otherwise, you can also represent mu and Cox in terms of milliampere per volt square or ampere per volt square, but these numbers will be in fraction under this case. Anyway, so uh, let me also consider some value for the W by L and let us assume that W by L is equal to 10. Now with this assumption already we have assumed VTH, the threshold value to be equal to 0.5 volt. So when the input signal is equal to zero over here, the time varying input signal is equal to zero over here, you understand not about the current. The current is equal to zero. Because input signal is equal to zero, that means the VGS value is equal to VTH. So what about the current? So if you put the value over here, the current will be equal to zero. Now what about the peak value of the current? The peak value of the current, that is ID, if I consider ID max, so this ID max is nothing but half 
let me put the value for mu and c ox. This will be 100 multiplied with w by l. This is, that is 10. And then you have a VGS minus VTH whole square. Now, uh, whenever the V in value attains its peak at 5 millivolt, under this case, this VGS, this get to source voltage is nothing but the threshold voltage plus 5 millivolt. So VGS minus VTH is nothing but the input voltage. So then it will be 5 millivolt whole square. So I have to represent this in terms of volt. So 5 millivolt means 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 volt. So this square, then it becomes uh, in volt square. And here you have microampere, 100 microampere or volt square. So I have to multiply this with. So anyway, so this is microampere. So under this case, uh, what you can have is this unit will be in microamps. Unit will be in microamps. So what you have, you have uh, like uh, 25 by 2, that is 12.5, 12.5, and then you have 10 to the power minus 6, 10 to the power minus 6 into 10 to the power Ten to the power minus six into you have ten to the power three here, and then you have another ten to the power minus six in order to represent this ID max in ampere. Then ultimately six plus six twelve twelve minus three that is nine. So twelve point five into ten to the power minus nine ampere. That means 12.5 nanoampere amount of current for this particular setup. For mu and Cox to be 100 microampere per volt square, W by L to be 10, and Vt is to be 0.5 volt, what you have, the ID max is equal to 12.5 nanoampere. So the amount of current that you can have over here is pretty small in the range of nanoampere. And now, if you'd like to have a corresponding fluctuation of, as I've already mentioned that uh, we would like to have a gain of say 10. So if the gain that you like to have is of 10, then obviously the corresponding value of RD will be like 50 millivolt because 5 millivolt is the peak value of the input signal multiplied with 10 divided by 12.5 nanoampere amount of current. Then uh, it will give you 50 by 12.5 will give you 4 and milli by nano 10 to the power minus 3 by 10 to the power minus 9 that is 10 to the power plus 6 that means mega ohm. So 4 mega ohm. So the requirement of the drain resistance is pretty large that is 4 mega ohm. It's very difficult to uh, achieve or obtain a resistance like this for this particular case. If you'd like to place a threshold voltage or a battery equal to threshold voltage in series with the input signal. So this circuit might work for the amplification purpose, uh, but uh, you have certain limitations as far as the different parameters are concerned, as far as the different components of the circuits are concerned. Now let me uh, once again redefine the circuit and let me have a situation like this. Uh, let me uh, do one thing. Uh, let me just uh, write down the expression of RD word here only. RD is equal to 50 millivolt divided by 12.5 nano ampere. That will give you 4 mega ohm resistance that is very large and it's very difficult to achieve this amount of resistance very high resistance anyway so now let me once again uh, 
uh, modify uh, the circuit, the input side of the circuit, uh, so that uh, we can have a faithful amplification with a considerable value of those different parameters. So let's consider that now the circuit looks something like that. In fact, we are just going to modify the input side. We are keeping the output side as it is. So after completing this one, we have to check whether the output side is good enough or not. So this one is RD, this one is V in, and this voltage, now let me call this voltage plus minus, this voltage, let me call this voltage to be say V1, and so far we have assumed that V1 is equal to VTH, and now let us take V1 is equal to, let it be twice VTH. So in this case, if VTH is equal to 0 0.5 volt, uh, then the V1 is equal to 1 volt. So under this condition, once again, what we are doing is, let me once again draw this uh, ID VGS characteristics curve, ID versus VGS. So up to this point, you have no current. And then it increases. Let me raise this part, yeah. So this one is VTH. And let us consider this to be at 2 VTH. Now under this condition, let me once again find out the expression or the value of the drain current whenever the input voltage has its excursion from 0 to 5 millivolt. So the excursion, so the same input signal we are providing here also. This is 5 millivolt for the input signal V in. And let us check what about the current value, that is ID. So the same expression you can follow here as well, that is half mu and C ox W by L into the overdrive voltage whole square. Assuming that the device is in saturation region. Then what about this ID? Minimum. So ID minimum is obtained when you have, or I should not write ID minimum, rather uh, it should be something like that. Uh, let me just uh, take a different color. So. You have a fluctuation of ID like this as well. So let us consider this value of ID. So if I call this value to be say ID1 and this value is ID2. So ID1 corresponds to, so I should not write ID1, I should not write uh, ID min, rather ID1 and ID2. So ID1 corresponds to ID1 corresponds to V in equal to zero and ID2 corresponds to V in to be five millivolt. So then uh, the value of ID1 is like, so when uh, V in is equal to zero, then ID1 is given by half mu n C ox W by L into VGS1 minus VTH whole square. Then what about the relation between uh, VGS and V in? Already have seen, I can write VGS to be V in plus 2 VTH. 
so when v in is equal to 0 when v in is equal to 0 then uh, the corresponding gate to source voltage is equal to let me consider this to be vgs1 and that is nothing but 2vth so vgs1 is equal to 2vth so if you put this value over here so vgs1 minus vth whole square will give you half into mu and cos so let me put the value over here 100 w by l to be set 10 and then you have 1 vth and square of it so 1 vth is uh, 0.5 volt so i can put the value over here so that value is coming like Five into ten to the power minus three whole square. This amount of microamp here. So when VGS is equal to VGS one, that is equal to two VTH, then this is the amount of current. And surprisingly, if you just compare this one with the previous one, both of them being the same, half into hundred into ten into you have sorry uh, in this particular case you don't have 10 to the minus 3 so you have only 5 so it will be 5 square into multi um, microamp here so 5 let me just uh, change it it's 0. 0.5 so 0. 0.5 whole square this volt microampere so then it becomes 0 0.5 whole square is nothing but 0 0.25 0 0.25 by 2 that is 0 0.125 0 0.125 into 10 to the power 3 here into 10 to the power minus 6 here ampere that means 0 0.125 milliampere so this is the amount of current id1 when the input signal is at zero then the gate to source voltage is becoming twice vth so 0 0.125 into 10 to the power 3 10 to the minus 6 perfectly fine and then let me just check what about id2 so id2 is nothing but the amount of current when the input signal achieves its peak then also you have the same expression that is half mu and c ox w over l into now vgs2 minus vth full square now when v in is equal to at its peak, that means V is equal to 5 millivolt over here. V is equal to 5 millivolt. Then the gate to source voltage, let me consider this gate to source voltage to be VGS2. And that is equal to 2 VTH plus 5 millivolt. So if you calculate VGS2 minus 1 VTH, so that is nothing but 1 VTH plus 5 millivolts. So 1 VTH is uh, 0.5 volt. So 0.5 volt plus 5 millivolts. So 5 millivolt is 0 0.005 volt. So then uh, it becomes like this half mu and C ox W by L into 1 VTH plus 5 millivolt whole square something like that so then it becomes half into 100 over here into 10 over here into here you have uh, 0.5 volt plus 5 millivolt so 0 0.505 so 0 0.505 in volt 
whole square this much micrograms so uh, let me just calculate uh, what is the value of 0.505 whole square so 0.505 into 0.505 uh, will give you like 0.255025 now if you divide it by 2 then it becomes 0.1275 so let me take this value 0 0.1275 so 0 0.1275 so if i if i'm happy with uh, three decimal point then it will be simply 0 0.127 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 in terms of minus 6 that means uh, this much of milliampere so now you can uh, see the fluctuation of the drain current when the input signal goes from 0 to 5 millivolt previously in the last case in the last problem what we have seen is when the input signal was here that means when the input signal value is equal to 0 and then the get to source voltage was equal to the threshold voltage simply so uh, this expression says that the value of id will be equal to 0 ampere only because at this particular point your vgs value is equal to vt8 so therefore the current value is equal to zero and then when the input signal makes a transition makes a jump from the zero volt to five millivolt under this condition we have measured the the peak current of the id and that is nothing but 12.5 nanoampere and accordingly we have measured that the requirement of the resistance will be that high it will be like four mega ohms because the input signal i mean when the input signal has a transition from 0 volt to 5 millivolt 0 millivolt to 5 millivolt then the output must be having a transition from must be having a fluctuation variation from 0 to 50 millivolt and during that time uh, the corresponding current increases from 0 ampere to 12.5 nanoampere so therefore uh, you can measure the corresponding value of the resistance to be 4 mega ohms now in this particular case what you have the corresponding change in the value of current is nothing but 0.125 milliampere to 0 0.127 milliampere that is 0 0.002 milliampere so what we can have is the corresponding change in current so the corresponding change is given by delta id if i uh, simply write like delta id that is nothing but id2 minus id1 and approximately this is 0 0.127 milliampere minus 0 0.125 milliampere so ultimately this is nothing but 0 0.002 milliampere so this is the change and what about this delta v out that we expect in order to have a gain of 10 then this delta v out should be 50 millivolt because the input signal is having a fluctuation from 0 to 5 millivolt that is a, a variation of the input signal and we would like to have an amplification uh, with an amplification factor of 10 so under this condition this delta v out should be equal to 50 millivolt so then uh, we can uh, simply calculate the value of rd the drain resistance to be delta v out upon delta id so now it is coming like 50 millivolt divided by that's so what i can do is uh, i can represent this like uh, 0 0.002 milliampere means 2 microampere 2 microampere so 50 by 2 will give you 25 and milli by micro will give you kilo so 25 kilo ohms so the requirement so now this time uh, you have an rd value uh, to be 25 kilo ohms as compared to the previous one so last time we have an rd value to be say uh, 4 mega ohms for this particular setup and with the same setup without changing the movement cos value without changing the device dimension and with the same value of the input signal same fluctuation same variation of the input signal with the same gain if i just change the this particular voltage this voltage from vth to 2vth then what you can find is we have a remarkable change in the value of the drain resistance from 4 mega ohms it has come down to 25 kilo ohms only 
so that is the biggest advantage over here because you can uh, easily uh, find out uh, this particular resistance in discrete form and uh, if you would like to design this resistance by means of a mos device that is also possible for this resistance in the range of kilo ohms however it will be very difficult to design a resistance in the order of few mega ohms either in discrete form or using this integrated form so now uh, what you can find is uh, once again let me just uh, go back uh, to our uh, once again let me just uh, go back uh, to our uh, id vgs characteristics card which is something like that this one is vgs this one is id up to threshold voltage there is let me just change it so up to the threshold voltage there is a no flow of current which is quite natural so let me just change the color so up to this threshold voltage there is no current this is vth and then it increases like this now we can uh, so now let me uh, let me take uh, uh, another color uh, to show that uh, these are the three points where we have so this is one point this is another point and this is another point so this is point number 1 uh, or uh, let me call this is point a this is point b and this is point c so in point a in point a what we have the corresponding value of v1 was equal to 0 while in point b the corresponding value of v2 is equal to 1 threshold and for point c sorry it is not v2 uh, we are using the same thing so it will be v1 so v1 is equal to vth and in point c uh, you have v1 is equal to 2 times vth uh, for an understanding we are talking about this particular circuit diagram at the this one is v1 and this one is your v in and we'll be taking the output from this particular node so when uh, you select the v1 value when you select the v1 value to be is equal to exactly 0 that means there is uh, no dc bias over here under this condition you are over here at this particular point on this id which is characteristic card and even if we apply a small amount of input signal v in eventually there is no provision of amplification the device is completely dead because the channel is not created now in the second attempt what we have done is we have shifted this point from here to here from a to b by selecting a value of v1 to be equal to one threshold so if i consider the threshold value to be 0.5 volt so then it will be 0.5 volt only under this condition what you have seen is okay the device is on the channel is created that is fine but the question is that the corresponding requirement of the drain resistance is very large in the range of uh, mega ohms because for the same amount of this delta v out which is equal to 50 millivolt and that is the specification of the amplification amplifier because we would like to have an amplifier with a gain of 10 and if i have an input signal of 5 millivolt peak under this condition uh, we have seen that the corresponding current variation is very small it is varying from 0 to 12.5 nanoampere only so therefore in order to have the same fluctuation 
in the output voltage, the corresponding requirement in the drain resistance is becoming large. Then what we have done is we have once again shifted the value from B to C, the value of V1. And while doing so, what we have seen is, so now this time in order to have the same value of delta V out, the corresponding delta ID has been increased. So previously it was only 12.5 nanoamperes and this time it is 2 microamperes. So it's almost more than 10 to the power theta. So if you just consider 12.5 nano, so it is in the range of uh, nano ampere that is 10 to the power minus 9 ampere. And this time it is uh, 2 microampere. Uh, that means in the range of 10 to the power minus 6 ampere. So 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 6. So almost close to 1000 times enhancement in the value of uh, ID you have achieved over here. And accordingly, what we have uh, also guaranteed that the corresponding reduction is also feasible in the value of Rd. So now, uh, uh, if the situation is like this, suppose you are having an Id VGS characteristics like this. In fact, uh, that thing we have discussed uh, in a notional form in the last class. What I mean to say is that if I have an Id VGS characteristics like this, this is uh, the drain current. This is the gate to source voltage. Up to this, there is no current. And then the current increases like this. And this is my threshold voltage. And suppose uh, two points are given to you. Suppose this is one point. Let me consider this point to be, say, uh, P1. And let me consider another point over here. Let me consider this point to be say P2. So these are the two choices given to you for the selection of V1. Whether you select V1 to be this much. Let me call this to be say V dash. And let me call the corresponding V1 value to be say V double dash. Then uh, a question is thrown to you that uh, whether you would prefer uh, selecting or a value of V1 to be equal to V dash, for which uh, this is the point on the IDVGS characteristics curve, or will you go for V double dash, where this is the point in the IDVGS characteristics curve? What you have seen is from the previous discussion is that as you uh, go on moving the point, this point along this IDVGS characteristics curve, from this origin towards this side, from left to right, for a similar amount or same change in the output voltage, the corresponding change in the output current is also enhanced. Here you have seen that there is no change because the device is completely dead. If you select the point to be at point A, then if you select the point to be at uh, threshold voltage at VTH, then the corresponding fluctuation is very small in the range of few nanoamperes for the same change in the output voltage or similar change in the output voltage and as you move from this point to so this is this particular point corresponds to one threshold and the point c corresponds to two threshold twice the threshold then you have seen that even if you have changed or even if you have increased the value of v1 by a factor of two from one threshold to two threshold a remarkable increase has been obtained in the value of delta id so from 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 6. So around or almost 1000 times enhancement you have obtained in the value of delta ID. So if you go on like this from P1 to P2, if you go on like this, you can expect that for a similar change in the value of delta V out, you can have a relatively higher change in the value of delta ID. So that uh, a discussion uh, we can uh, simply observe uh, from this particular analysis but uh, this particular nature of the MOS device has already been uh, established or discussed in our last lecture in the sense that we have defined one uh, parameter which is called the transconductance that is gm and this transconductance was defined like the variation of this delta id with respect to a variation of 
the get to source voltage delta id upon delta vgs and we have uh, obtained this like mu n c ox w by l into vgs minus vth and that time i have mentioned that this uh, transconductance is playing a very vital role in selecting uh, the behavior of that particular mos amplifier or mos device in isolation so this gm is nothing but delta id by delta vgs and remember this characteristic curve that we are considering over here in saturation region so this will follow so this will follow this particular equation that is half mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square so this is a quadratic expression so it's a function of vgs but not linear function so since it's a parabolic form so therefore if you would like to measure the slope of this particular graph which is nothing but delta id upon delta vgs so as you have seen over here this slope is not fixed the slope is not constant rather it depends on the value of vgs so if you select the point over here the slope is small because the corresponding vgs is small so as you go on increasing the value of vgs the corresponding slope will be larger now what is the advantage of having a higher slope the advantage is that if you just once again look at this particular expression this is nothing but delta id upon delta vgs so for a small change or for similar change in delta vgs you can have a corresponding enhanced change in the id value in both of these three cases we have considered the delta vgs the input signal variation to be from 0 millivolt to plus 5 millivolt in the positive cycle while you have selected the corresponding battery at this particular point a you have seen that the corresponding delta id is becoming zero there is no change in the output current the output current was exactly zero however if you have moved from point a to point b you have seen that for a similar change in delta vgs the corresponding delta id is like close to uh, in the range of nano ampere and as you move further from this point to this point what you find is for a similar change in delta vgs uh, the corresponding delta id is comparatively larger so from nano ampere to micro ampere so as you go on increasing in this way from this point to this point this point to this point this is much more preferable as far as the amplification term of the device is concerned however there is certain disadvantage as well because as you go on increasing uh, this point so what happens is without the application of the signal even if the signal is absent even if the input signal v is equal to 0 only v1 is there you find that the corresponding dc current a constant current which is flowing because once again let me let me go back to this uh, to this particular slide here we have mentioned that ultimately the mos uh, behaves like this you have this mos in the saturation region working like this a current source from the drain to source and the value of the current source solely depends upon the value of the gate to source voltage so if you select the gate to source voltage at a slightly higher value then this amount of current will be always flowing through the circuit even if the signal is absent even if the signal is absent this amount of current will always flow through the circuit and if you select a large value for vgs then because of the flow of this amount of current the corresponding uh, power loss will take place so now uh, now uh, we are in a position to understand what is the uh, utility of uh, adding this particular voltage source this particular battery in series with the input signal and uh, from your knowledge uh, in uh, bipolar junction transistor amplifier also you understand that this particular v1 basically sets up the terminal voltages and the currents before the amplification operation to take place without having this v1 if you simply connect the input signal v in directly to the gate terminal of this mos device then the device is not at all functional it cannot function properly 
So to use the device as an amplifier, before the signal comes in, you have to set up certain conditions. You have to set up certain voltage and some terminal voltages and some nodal current. If these terminal voltages and the nodal currents, if these are not properly fixed, before the signal appears, then the notion of amplification cannot be obtained at all. And this entire process of setting up the terminal voltages and nodal currents, even if the signal is absent, even if this signal V is absent, you must be having some voltage and you must be having some current. So for the uh, for the sake of simplicity, if I, if I assume that this is the point where I select my V1, let it be say V dash, then even if the signal is absent, the gate to source voltage over here is nothing but V dash, even if this is absent, and the corresponding current which is flowing through this terminal is equal to I dash. So this current V dash and I dash, this is already present even if you have not applied the input signal, right? And this entire phenomenon of setting up the conditions for the proper amplification to take place is known as the biasing condition. A very similar condition, what we have seen in case of uh, bipolar transistors. And for the MOS transistors, we are observing a similar kind of requirement in order to use the device as an amplifier. Now, uh, uh, what we have seen is so far, uh, the input side of this particular device, input side of this device has been connected to some external battery so that uh, we can establish the channel between the drain to source and accordingly we can apply the input signal, the small signal, so that the proper amplification takes place. Now, while doing this entire analysis, we have assumed that uh, the current will follow this particular equation that is id is equal to half mu and c of w over l vgs minus vth whole square and you know this is the condition in the saturation region so if the device operates in the saturation region uh, then the id must follow this particular equation now the question is that whether the circuit that we have already shown over here whether this circuit whether this circuit uh, the circuit that we have shown like this, whether this circuit, suppose we have a signal source and a battery is there in series with the signal source. Now let me consider a battery value to be say V1. So V1 can be anything greater than or equal to the threshold voltage. And you have a V in over here. And the source is grounded. And we have a drain resistance over here, Rd, and output is taken from this particular point. Let me once again remind you the condition for the MOS to be in the saturation region. The condition is that the drain to source voltage should be greater than the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage. Now, this condition must hold good before the signal comes in and whenever the signal is operating. Now what happens when the signal is completely, I mean this input signal is not there, when VIN is not there. When the input signal is absent, you have this particular V1 connected to the gate of this particular device and assuming that this V1 is large with respect to the threshold voltage, you can select one threshold voltage, two threshold voltage or anything greater than the threshold voltage in the place of V1. So then uh, the channel is created and this get to source voltage, you can expect that this VGS under this condition is greater than the threshold voltage and the channel is created, that's fine. What about the VDS? So this is nothing but the drain to source voltage, VDS. This is nothing but your drain to source voltage. So now, if you just closely observe the output side of this particular circuit, what happens then? You don't have 
any externally connected battery over here. No connection is established over here. No externally connected battery is present. Then what about the VDS? How can you ensure that this VDS value is greater than the threshold, greater than the overdrive voltage, get to source voltage minus the threshold voltage? Because between these two points, you don't have any battery connected. So from where the current, because ultimately what you have is this current, we can represent this current to be like this, half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square. So can you connect a battery directly at this particular point? from drain end to the source end. If you make any attempt to connect a battery from this end to the source end, then what happens? The role of this resistance is completely removed. If you simply connect a battery from this point to this point, then even if the signal comes in, whenever the signal is present, then also this output voltage will remain constant because you have already connected a battery from this drain terminal to the source terminal. So this is not a good alternative for you. So how can you expect or how can you establish that this drain to source voltage must exceed the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage? In order to answer this question, what you can do is you have to modify the output circuit as well. Because you have to establish that this drain to source voltage should be greater than zero. so that at least it should be greater than zero if the device just enters into the saturation region because under this condition the gate to source minus the threshold voltage will be just higher than zero overdrive will be just higher than zero when the device turns on and under this condition if you would like to operate the device in the saturation region then the drain to source voltage should be slightly higher than zero so in order to ensure this one, what you have is, this is like V1, this one is V in, now you have to connect another battery which can provide the corresponding current because you need to provide the corresponding current because there is an ID. If you just closely observe the output side, we have written this expression that ID is equal to half mu and Cox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. But from where this ID is coming? Because if you just closely observe between gate to source, there is no flow of current. Only apply some voltage over here, the channel will be created. So the current will be flowing in the output side now, if the current flows in the output side, there must be, there must have some provision for the current flow. And that can only be established if you provide a voltage source, a battery. And since the current will flow in this direction from drain to source, this is the flow of current, as you understand. This is the flow of current. So this should be my polarity of the battery. Let me call this to be V2 and this one to be RD. Under this condition, what you have is the corresponding value of, so now you have uh, three different voltages over here. So let me just uh, point it out. So this one is VDS, drain to source. And when the current flows in this direction, then this will be a plus minus, let me call this to be say VR. So then what you can write is V2, this V2, this voltage is nothing but VR voltage across this resistance RD. And this should be the polarity because the current flows in that direction from this point to this point. So this, short, this side will be much more positive with respect to this side. And this is VDS and VDS should be positive as well. So that's why this side positive, this side negative. So VR plus 
VDS. And what about VR? VR is nothing but ID times RD plus VDS. So the condition is that the VDS should be greater than the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage. It should be greater than the corresponding overdrive voltage. So accordingly, now you can uh, represent V2 as ID times RD plus VDS. And the VDS minimum is equal to VGS minus the threshold voltage. Get to source voltage minus the threshold voltage. So accordingly, you have to select the value of this V2, this particular battery, so that significant amount of VDS is developed over here between the drain to source in order to keep this transistor in the saturation region because the corresponding condition is that half mu and cox w over l vgs minus vth whole square so from that you can also find out the expression for the uh, gate to source voltage this particular equation says that this vgs gate to source voltage can be written like root over of 2 id divided by mu and c ox w over l plus vth so that is the expression for gate to source voltage in terms of the drain current threshold voltage device dimension and mu and c ox from this particular equation 2 id by mu and c of w over l square root of this rpt and now you have uh, two equations uh, one equation uh, says that vgs in this particular form square root of this one which is obtained from that particular equation and the second equation second kvl equation is also obtained from analyzing this particular amplifier in the output circuit for which the corresponding value of v2 is given by the voltage across this resistance id times rd plus vds so accordingly uh, you can select a value of vds so that the device operates in the saturation region for the entire period of the input signal i mean whenever the input signal makes a transition from so we have an input signal like this so this one is say, 5 millivolt so whenever the input signal is absent that means when the value of vgs is exactly equal to the v on then you have to ensure that the device must be in the saturation region moreover when the input signal appears when the input signal comes in and it achieves its peak over here then also you need to ensure that under this condition also the device must be in the saturation region over here you can simply observe that when the input signal is at its peak i mean v is equal to 5 millivolt then what about vgs so let, let us consider say say v1 to be 2 times vth So then VGS get to source voltage can be written like V in plus 2 VTH. So therefore VGS minus VTH is given by V in plus 1 VTH. So whenever the input signal is at its peak that means when the input signal value is equal to 5 millivolt 
so then vgs minus vth that value when the input signal is at its peak at peak input at peak input this is coming to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.005 0 0.5 is coming from the threshold voltage and 0 0.005 is coming from the input contribution. This much of volt, that means 0 0.505 volt for our particular setup. So this should be 0 0.505 volt. So that is the maximum value of VGS minus VTH, which happens when the input signal achieves its peak, that is 0 0.505. So you need to ensure that even if the input signal achieves its peak, that means over here, then also the device must be in the saturation region. So at this particular point, you have to ensure the drain to source voltage should be greater than this value. So the what about the minimum value of this VDS? So now it is, so it happens with peak input, VGS minus VT with peak input. And this is coming to be, for this particular case, it is coming to be 0 0.505 volt. So this is the minimum value of the VDS, drain to source voltage for this particular case, that is 0 0.505 volt. And uh, this can be written like, so let me just uh, go to the next slide. And uh, already have established that my V2 is nothing but VR plus VDS. So what about VR? VR is nothing but ID times RD plus VDS. So ID can be written as half mu and C ox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square into RD plus VDS min and that VDS min is nothing but 0 0.505 volt and you can uh, 0 0.505 volt. So you can also plug in those values for VGS minus VTH. So then uh, it is coming like half just like 100 into 10 into under this condition already have established that uh, this VGS minus VTH is coming like 0 0.505 volt when the input signal is at its peak. So then 0 0.505 volt square. So this square into RT plus 0 0.505. And so already we have done this calculation before. Uh, let me just check. Uh, previous we have done this calculation. Yes, half hundred into ten into point five zero five whole square is coming like uh, point one two seven, point one two seven milliampere. So that part is point one two seven milliampere. So zero point one two seven into milliampere. That is ten to the power minus three in times RD plus 0 0.505. So if I select an RD value to be say, let me consider, let us assume RD to be say one kilo ohm. We have one kilo ohm resistance over here. So it suggests that the V2 must be equal to, so one kilo ohm and 10 to the minus three. So it gets canceled. So you have a 0 0.127 plus you have 0. 505 this much of fold that means 0 0.5 uh, plus 6 to no it will be like uh, 505 plus 1 to 7 632 0 0.632 volt so this is the minimum value for v2 so v2 minimum so v2 minimum so that is like 0 0.62 you can select 
a little bit higher value for V2. This is the marginal value 0.632. So in the output side, you have to select or you have to use one battery whose value for this particular case, for this particular sum is coming out to be 0.632 volt. So at least this much V2 you need to provide. So uh, for the sake of simplicity, you can you can use a V2 value say 0.8 volt or 0.7 volt so that it can provide a sufficient amount of drain current and the corresponding drain to source voltage should be at least greater than the uh, overdrive voltage, the peak of the overdrive voltage. And under this condition, the device uh, will be uh, entirely uh, in the saturation region, even if the signal is absent and uh, whenever the signal is present as well. So uh, uh, this particular lecture uh, that uh, I have uh, given today is uh, entirely on setting up the conditions for a MOS device so that it can be used as an amplifier. In the last three lectures, we have talked about the different properties of the MOS device, the current voltage properties, how does the current vary with different terminal voltages like gate to source voltage, trend to source voltage, what about the role of the threshold voltage and all. And we have also developed several uh, parameters associated with the device like the transconductance, like the output resistance and so on. And this lecture is basically a transient one between the device characteristics and the analog circuit, the implementation or the use of the device, employment of the device in the analog circuit. Because whenever you are going to uh, use a device as an amplifier, then you have to set up certain conditions. Only knowing the device physics is not good enough because there are certain other things that you have to understand before applying the device in the practical applications. And already this concept is, uh, is well known from your understanding in uh, bipolar transistors that even if you want to uh, use a device and amplifier, you need to create certain conditions. And that condition is nothing but setting up the proper current, nodal currents and the terminal voltages between the different terminals. And we are emphasizing that uh, even if we have two regions of operations like saturation and the uh, triode region, but in order to use the device as an amplifier, we will be using it in the saturation region because the fact is in the saturation region, we have a voltage controlled current source. And if you can pass this particular current through a resistance, then we can obtain the output voltage as a function of the input voltage. So that is the notion. And in order to accomplish this particular task, we have to create certain conditions, which is known as the biasing conditions. And this entire uh, concept of biasing, uh, we have uh, tried to compile in today's lecture. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude my today's lecture.